Hi, today I would like to introduce you the new Cura. A new version has been released, Cura 2.5. On the Ultimaker.com page you can download it for free. What has changed? Basically, not really much, the hint, that if you installed it over your 2.4 version, that then the settings can be lost, is perhaps not bad, I had saved my settings before, but these were not lost. Just as a hint, with 3MF files now faster speeds possible, you can use multi-threading when calculating. You can now select preheat bile plate, but this is only for the Ultimaker 3 and not for us. There are now better 3D layout view options. You can turn off automatic slicing. This I do not know exactly. New is, that you can calculate the printing costs. You can then enter the filament prices. This I show you later. You can now import G-code files. Discard or keep change popup. I do not know what it is. There are new infills. I'll show it later. And then still various bug fixes. Not very much changes. Our printer is still not recognized over USB. I have just connected it to USB, but it does not work with me. Okay, all setting I had make in the 2.4 video are still there. You probably knew the video. Also my printer setting are still there. But we go through it step by step. So as said version 2.5.0. And then would simply say. I have switched to German. You can switch it here. Here you can set a currency. If you do not want to send anonymous print information. You should disable it here. Otherwise you will send things to Ultimaker in the background. And then let's just go through it step by step. Here we have the settings. Here are all things hooked. Which you find on the right side. If you are missing something on the right side. From the things I go through. You can find them here and you can hook them up. I have nothing else hooked. As in version 2.4. And so we go to the next. Let's start with the printer settings. If you now restart the Cura completely. Then you go here to add printers. If you select custom FDM printer below. You will see this window. I go to my printer to show you what you have to set. I delete the custom printer. And go now to my Anet A8 settings. So what do you have to adjust? We have here the printer settings. Which is the size of the printing area. How wide. How deep and how high it can print. There you write 220. 220. And 240 millimeters. In the print head settings. Delete all. That always make problems. If there was something in it, the standard nozzle size for our Anet A8 is 0.4 millimeters. Please make sure you make a dot. There are smaller nozzles that you can buy, but that is standard. Machine center is zero. Take the hook out. Build plate is rectangular, not elliptical. We have a heated bed. And the G-code variant is RepRap Marlin Sprinter. You will find the two G-codes in the video description. When you have finished the settings, you can click here below. Then your printer is added. The name is still custom FDM printer. Here you can click to rename it to an A8. That's it. Let's go to next. After this, you can see the Anet A8 up here. If not, you can select your printer. The next are the materials. There is something new. We have several different materials here. I have take this to test the cost calculation. Did I take PLA? I set the price for the filament roll, and how much grams it have. Then Cura calculates a price of about 0.07 euros per meter. And if I now insert a thing to print, then first Cura sliced it. After slicing you can see here, the cost is 1.36 euros. It need 54 grams and 18.32 meters from the roll. It takes 4 hours 36 minutes print time. My printer needs most a bit longer, then Cura shows here. After slicing, then Cura show, ready for saving on removable media. Here you click to save it, to your SD card, 
Then you put it into the printer. There select to print from the SD card. I mean that printing from SD card is more advantageous. Because if you print over USB, then you always have the problem. The USB connection must remain the whole print. If the computer crashes in these 436 hours, when Kira crashes, if the USB connection is interrupted by something, then the print will stop. This dot happens to you. If you print from the SD card. In addition, you do not have powered on the PC, which also saves electricity costs, or you can do something else at the PC, and do not have to worry that Cura crashes, because you overload the PC. Okay, that once between. We open now again the settings, and look to the other things. Here are the materials, again. The profiles we check later, to see what you have to set up there. The plugins I have not changed. Now we have again a look at the print object. Use the right mouse button to rotate it. With the left you can move it. With this button you can scale it, make it bigger and smaller. Here you can enter how much percent it should be larger, or smaller. Here it can be rotated. If you tackle the different circles you can rotate it. Here you can reflect the object. And here you can make settings direct at the object. For whatever reason. I have never used. If you here change to layers. And you check the support structure. Then you see, Cura now shows the support structure. Perhaps it's new in this version. I think it's a good feature. You can go through the layers. So let's go through the profiles. I have created two profiles. First the medium quality with 0.2 mm print quality, and the Annette A8 high quality with 0.1 mm. I have made them for my 2.4 video, and I have nothing changed. I put the links in the video description, where you can download them, to import them into Cura. So let's go through the middle profile. As said, the layer thickness is 0.2 mm. Always with a dot, not with a comma. The first layer thickness is 0.3 mm. This is the lowest layer. The adhesion is better, if that is a bit thicker. The wall thickness I made to 0.8 mm, and the upper and lower thickness 0.8. The lower thickness is, of course, also the lowest layer. The wall thickness is this, what is between these things. I hope you can recognize this. When I go a little bit closer, a fill is printed here. It is basically hollow, and a supporting structure is printed inside. The wall thickness is printed around this structure, and it is 0.8 millimeters wide. The upper and lower pattern is, how to close the surface. You can take lines, concentric, or zigzag. You must know, what is best for you. Z seam, I can't explain exactly, the values I've seen somewhere, and have simply taken it. Do not disturb, but I do not know, what they are doing right now. Infill density is the pattern, what print here inside. I choice grid, the filling density is 20%. This means, 20% between the walls are filled. When changed to lines, then it's sliced again. And this is now a bit tighter. Turn to triangles. Yes, these are triangles. So you can choose the support structure. I almost use grid. Zigzag would interest me, as the looks, compared to triangle or grid. Actually quite similar. Well, let's go on. The printing temperature I set to 200 degrees. Of course, this depends on the material with which you print. When you print PLA, it is usually between 190 and 210 degrees. You just have to test, which printing temperature is the best for you. The manufacturer often supplies the optimum temperature. Initial printing temperature is, when the print can at least begin. When the optimum is between 190 degrees and 210 degrees, then it can start printing at 190 degrees. I let it also begin to print with 200 degrees. The final temperature is, when the cooling can begin. Already just before the print is finished. 
whether it can go down with temperature. I have left it also at 200 degrees. Build plate temperature is 60 degrees for PLA. For the first layer you can specify a different temperature, but I have also 60 degrees. There you have to look, if the adhesion is not good, then go a little higher with the temperature at the first layer, then the adhesion is made better. Diameter is important. Our nozzle has 1.75 millimeters. Do not set anything else, otherwise you can really forget the print. The flow is the speed with which the filament is run out of the print head. So the small motor, which is at the print head, carries the filament. 100 is the normal value, then the motor pushes it out with 100 speed, a explanation of this. When you realize that the print is somehow sobering out at the layers, or odd on the outside wall, then it can be that the motor squeezes too much, then you should go down with the value a little. If you notice that, there are small gaps between the layers, then he might push out too little, and increase the value, so you know what effect it has. Enable retraction is, if not printed when the nozzle is moved, the filament is retracted a little, so nothing run out during these trips. I have specified the print speed at the medium profile to 75 mm per second. The infill speed also 75. The wall speed with 37.5, outer wall speed 37.5, inner wall speed 75, top button speed 37.5, travel speed 150, and initial layer print speed with 37.5. The values adjust automatically. If I increase the print speed to 80 mm, then you will see the other values automatically adjusted to the recommended values. Of course, you can still adapt yourself. So Z up when retracted, that is somehow the build plate Z, is lowered. I had switched it on, but then it always make problems. Enable print cooling. This is the fan's turn when you print. The initial fan speed is zero, because it is bad. When the first layer prints, and the fan cools too fast, then the adhesion is not so good, so it should be set to zero at the beginning, and after the first layers the fan starts turning. Then we have enable support here. If I turn it off, then the structure disappears here, as you see. You have to look, if your print object needs a supporting structure. You can recognize this quite well, if you switch here now on X-ray. I zoom a little bit out. Then nothing is dyed red. I'll take another print object. Then you see, here is a little red dyed, because it simply hangs in the air. Then you should activate the support structure. I do this, and then it's sliced again. Oh, and here we have to switch back to layers. And then you see here, now there is a support structure under print. This is where the support placed. Touching build plate, or everywhere. Everywhere it means, the support structure, would also print on the object itself. It may need for complicated printing pieces, but also makes the surface of the printing piece a bit unsightly, because where it prints, you have, of course remnants, and then it has to work afterwards. At build plate adhesion type you have a skirt. Now you choice layers. I believe Kira has not shown this before. I'll take a moment to show it to you. The skirt basically is the line that is going around here. This is because the flow of the filament needs to be ensured, before it starts printing, because it takes a bit, to get it out of the print head. So it prints a line around the object, and then print starts, if you change it to brim. Then we have to let it sliced again. Then you see it prints completely around. And the print object itself, when we look from below, touches the ground. These are the walls of the object, and the roundabout is the brim, it touches the print object at the side. The result is that the adhesion is better, because it have a larger surface. You can now also adjust how wide this should be. If I go now down to 4, then you can see that it become narrower. Then we have at least the raft. As you can see, there is now placed a complete floor plate under the entire print object. You see a complete plate that is very useful for small pieces, which have very little contact to the surface of the build plate, it makes sense to print on a plate, which prints before, because the adhesion is much better. Here you can adjust some things for the raft. 
raft air gap. This means the size of the gap between the raft and the print object. So you get it off well. You should do this with a jerk. The other two, no idea. Then we have dual extrusion. There is nothing in it because we do not have a dual extruder. That would be if the print head has two nozzles. So you can print two colors at the same time. The last is the special mode which is the print sequence. There you have all at once, or one at a time. If you put two things on your build plate, then it prints the two objects in one print. Then you can say all at once, so the print head jumps at each layer between the two objects. Jumping between the two objects at every layer often has the disadvantage, that there draw streaks between it, and it also takes longer, when it prints one after another, then it can happen, that if the print head makes movements, then it collides with the finished one. I always use all at once to prevent collisions, but, of course, everyone can see for themselves what is best for him, so that's are the settings. Now we go to the high quality profile, at the high quality I have actually only very little changed. The layer high is now 0.1. The wall thickness is 1.2, and the speed is lowered to 50 up here, and the other values are adjusted automatically. More has not changed in the profile high quality, yes, basically this was all. I hope I had now told everything. I look through again. Just one thing I can say. If you have set everything, you can save the project here. Then all will be saved, the print object on the build plate, how you have scaled it, and all your settings. So you can later load it again. This was already available in the 2.4 version, there it was new. And here it is still the same function, yes, that was it. Thank you that you have looked my video, and then I look forward to the next video with you. And goodbye.